There are few things that make one more thankful to live in the 21st century than the luxury of air conditioning. When the heat of a summer becomes unbearable, it's reassuring to know that one can always retreat into a man-made oasis of cool. But alas, like all luxuries, this one comes at a considerable cost. 87% of all US homes are equipped with air conditioning, with residential and commercial cooling accounting for 12% of the country's annual energy use. This massive consumption strains power grids to their limits and releases massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, while refrigerants leaking from air conditioning units act as powerful greenhouse gases, which ironically increases the planet's average temperature. Big air conditioning must be behind it all. But while alternative energy sources, like fusion and efficient solar power, always seem frustratingly out of reach, a practical solution to the air conditioning crisis may not lie in the future, but rather in the distant past. For hundreds of years, the peoples of the ancient Middle East and North Africa managed to keep cool, preserve food, and even make and store ice in the middle of the sweltering desert, all without electricity. They accomplished this through the ingenious use of architecture, the principles of which are inspiring present-day architects to design the next generation of ultra-green, passively cool buildings. Located 400 kilometers southeast of Tehran in the Bafka Desert, the ancient city of Yazid is among the oldest settlements in Iran, with evidence of habitation dating back to the Achaemenid Empire in 550 BCE. The UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2017, the city is renowned for its historic architecture, including the Jumeir Mosque, whose minarets are the tallest in the country. But it is towers of a different kind which make Yazid truly special. Scattered throughout the city are hundreds of elaborate rectangular brick structures, some tall, some short, some with one opening, and some with as many as eight. They are known as the bad gear or wind catches and are the secret to Yazid's ancient air conditioning and refrigeration system. Wind catchers work in a variety of ways depending on their size, design, and local conditions. At its simplest, a wind catcher consists of a simple scoop with the opening facing the prevailing wind, which directs cooler air to down into the building below. Sometimes these structures include baffles, filters, and other devices to catch sand, dust, insects, and other contaminants. This design is similar to that of Dorad boxes, the curved ventilators traditionally used on ships. Through the use of various baffles, Dorad boxes allow fresh air to reach lower decks while catching and draining away rainwater and sea spray. In heavily built up areas, wind catchers tend to be taller to catch cleaner, undisturbed air at higher altitudes, while in areas where the wind frequently changes direction, they will feature openings on all four sides. Some wind catchers are built with the opening facing away from the prevailing winds, such that when the winds blow past the tower, the resulting reduction in pressure, aka the Bernoulli effect, causes air to be drawn up the tower rather than forced down it. This suction is further enhanced by the so-called stack effect, wherein the buoyancy of the hot air heated by the sun causes it to rise up a vertical shaft. The taller the shaft, the more pronounced the effect. The end result is to expel hot air from the building and draw up cooler air from the cellars, basements, and other underground spaces. Even in the hottest or coldest climates, the temperature just a few meters underground remains relatively stable year-round, a fact exploited by more modern geothermal heating and cooling systems. Wind catchers are also used to draw cooler air into buildings at night, a process known as night flushing. Thick stone walls and other large masses then act as heat sinks, helping to keep the buildings cool through the heat of the day. Thus, with little more than carefully designed chimneys, for nearly a millennium and a half, the people of Iran have been able to passively cool their homes, mosques, and other structures, providing a welcome escape from the sweltering desert heat. It's not known for certain when or where wind catchers were invented. Relief carvings dating to 1300 BCE found in the tomb of Pharaoh Nebaman near Luxor, Egypt, depict triangular structures on the roof of the royal palace, leading archaeologists to posit that the technology originated in ancient Egypt. Indeed, wedge-shaped wind catchers called Malkaf were a common feature of Egyptian homes until the mid-20th century. On the other hand, excavations of a Persian temple dating to 4000 BCE uncovered numerous chimney-like structures with no traces of soot or ash, raising the possibility that wind catcher technology was established in Persia long before it reached Egypt. Whatever the case, similar technologies soon appeared across the ancient world, including the Roman Empire, where many homes incorporated a feature known as a tablinum. This was a shaded room located at one end of an open courtyard, where a family would display artwork, receive guests, and conduct business. The courtyard itself was surrounded on all sides by a sloping roof and was divided into an earth or stone-floored atrium and a planted garden. The combination of wind deflected downward by the roof and the different rates of solar absorption and convection between the pale atrium and dark garden created a strong draft that flowed through and cooled the tablinum. This style of architecture is still found throughout the Middle East, where it is known as a Takata bush. By the 7th century CE, wind catcher technology had spread to what is now India, Pakistan, Iraq, and finally Iran, where it reached the zenith of technical sophistication. On their own, wind catchers and other forms of passive ventilation can only lower the ambient temperature by a few 
few degrees, though often this is more than enough to provide a large measure of relief, especially in combination with the airflow combining to more rapidly evaporate sweat on the body. On that note, the cooling effect of forced ventilation can be significantly enhanced by combining it with evaporative cooling. One Middle Eastern innovation that exploits this effect is the salsabil or shadaran, a type of fountain often placed in courtyards. Typically built as a large sloping stone surface, a salsa built spreads the water flowing over it into a thin sheet, maximizing its surface area. This sheet absorbs heat from the air flowing over it, thus cooling and humidifying the surrounding space. Even more effective is the combination of wind catchers with a kanat, another ingenious Middle Eastern adaptation to desert living. Kanat are subterranean aqueducts used to transport water from aquifers to wells inside settlements. Being built underground, kanat are less susceptible to water loss through evaporation, more resistant to natural disasters like floods and earthquakes, and less sensitive to variations in rainfall than conventional surface aqueducts. Also, due to the aforementioned temperature stability underground, the water in Kanat tend to be significantly colder than that from surface sources like rivers. Thus, by allowing Kanat to flow beneath buildings equipped with wind catchers, ancient Persian architects were able to achieve significant temperature reductions as low as 15 degrees Celsius or about 28 degrees Fahrenheit below ambient temperature. Most remarkably of all, under certain conditions, temperatures could even be brought below freezing, allowing the Persians to pull off yet another remarkable magic trick, making ice. On this note, outside of its wind catchers, perhaps Yadza's most iconic architectural features are its ab anbars or domed cisterns. While most ab anbars cover reservoirs used to store water piped in by Kanat, some are built over underground structures known as yakachal or ice houses, first developed around 400 BCE. Though ice and snow was most often carried down from nearby mountains and stored in yakals, whose thick masonry walls and underground location helped insulate and preserve it through the hottest months, again, under certain conditions, the structures could be used to make ice. For this purpose, the Akachal's domes were fitted with multiple wind catchers as well as a hot air exhaust vent at the top of the conical dome. The thick dome walls themselves were built of a special mortar called serouge, composed of sand, clay, egg whites, lime, goat hair, and wood ash, which is impermeable to water and an excellent thermal insulator. Finally, Yakchals were supplied with water from Kanat, which was often routed through a duct on the northern shady side of the dome to cool it further. In the deserts of Iran, at night, the air temperature can often drop below freezing, while the dry air promotes the evaporative cooling of water. Yachtals exploit both these effects, as well as the passive cooling of wind catchers, to create sub-zero temperatures and generate ice. This ice was then used to preserve perishable food, chill drinks, and make faluda, a traditional Persian dessert made of glass noodles in half-frozen fruit syrup. Indeed, so integral were the Yakchals to the culture of the region that in modern Iran, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan, the term is still used to refer to modern electric refrigerators. Yet despite this long tradition of ingenious passive cooling technology, the use of wind catchers and their associated accessories declined rapidly in the modern era, especially after the Second World War, largely replaced with modern electric air conditioners, refrigerators, and freezers. There are several reasons for this. First, being tall and mounted on rooftops, wind catchers are difficult to access and maintain, leading to many falling into disrepair. Indeed, the oldest wind catchers in Iran date only to the 14th century, yet while the wind catcher at Yazid's Dolatabad Abad Gardens is one of the few still functioning anywhere in the world. Furthermore, in the post-war period, people across the Middle East were eager to embrace Western technology like electric air conditioners, leading to the large-scale abandonment of traditional cooling technologies like Egyptian Malkaf wind catchers. This changeover is so complete that today air conditioning accounts for 60% of Egypt's peak electrical power demand. But as the threat of climate change becomes ever more pressing, the wind catcher seems poised to make a comeback, with architects around the world drawing inspiration from this ancient technology to design the next generation of green buildings. As Param Kirchak Sandek, a researcher at Ilam University in Iran, stated in a 2022 BBC interview, there needs to be some changes in cultural perspectives to use these technologies. People need to keep an eye on the past and understand why energy conservation is important. It starts with recognizing cultural history and the importance of energy conservation. In 2009, researchers Shady Attia and André Heard of the Catholic University of Louvain in Belgium conducted a series of wind tunnel tests to evaluate the effectiveness of the traditional Egyptian Malkaf wind catcher. They found that if correctly positioned on the rooftop, Malkaf can achieve an incredible 5.6 whole building air changes every hour. This would allow Egyptians living in low-rise housing to easily meet the government's new energy code, calling for a minimum of 3 litres per second per person of natural ventilation and significantly reduced demand on the country's energy grid. 
it. Elsewhere, architects are taking wind catch technology far beyond its ancient roots. Between 1979 and 1994, some 7,000 wind catchers were installed on buildings across the UK, including the Royal Chelsea Hospital in London and shopping centres in Dartford and Manchester. The latter two buildings feature swivelling air intakes that follow the prevailing winds, allowing peak performance throughout the day. Across the Atlantic, the visitor centre at Tsar National Park in Utah features a Persian-style wind catcher tower, as well as several other passive heating and cooling devices, like a masonry heat retention wall, which together allow the building to achieve an energy and cost saving of 30% compared to other national park buildings. In Barbados, the Kensington Oval cricket pitch features a giant aluminium wind scoop on its roof, allowing it to collect more winds and achieve a greater cooling effect than would be possible with a traditional masonry wind catcher. Wind catchers are also making a comeback in their region of origin, with the Khalifa International Stadium in Qatar, site of the 2022 FIFA World Cup, as well as the Burj Al Taha Zero Emission Tower, Mass Architectural Studio, and World Expo Austrian Pavilion in Dubai, all in incorporating variations of this ancient technology.